All right, so um, now let's take a look at, at um, taking this function and actually creating a Python package for that function. And the benefit of putting this in a Python package is that if we want to use this function in another notebook where we're analyzing the same data set, we can, um, we can just import it rather than copying this code over. And putting functions into packages like this is how you, how you start to build a tool that other people could use to do similar types of analysis. So let's go to our, our terminal here and remind us what we have. We have the, the data right there. We have um, Jupyter Workflow. So I'm going to um, make a package and let's call it, um, let's just call it Jupyter Workflow. Um, actually, I'm just going to make it one thing like that. And um, so we have this directory called Jupyter Workflow. And the way you turn a directory into a Python package is to make a file called um, underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot py. And just to show you what that does, if we if we um, open that file and we do something like um, take it and say um, x equals 5.67. That's a file in there. Now if we, if we open Python and we import Jupyter, Jupyter Workflow, um, then this jupyterworkflow.x is available to us. So anything that happens in that init file is something that's available when you import that package right there. And um, what else you can do, you can, add, you can also um, put other packages in there. So let's make something called data.py. And in the data directory, we're going to take this nice function that we've already created and, and, um, and made sure it works. And we're going to put it right in here. So in our, in our data, we have the URL. I'm going to actually call it this Fremont URL just to make it a little bit more specific because we might um, have other data that we, that we add at a later date. And um, just to, to make sure that we know what this does, I want to document this. So this is um, download and cache the Fremont data. Um, and we can add other, other documentation too. So it's nice to have the parameters, um, file name, uh, let's call it a string optional. Um, location to save the data um, and say URL string optional uh, uh, web location of the data and uh, we'll say force download bool optional um, if true force re-download of, of data. So this, this is nice because then if we, if we forget what this function does, we can look here and, and again, returns um, data uh, pandas data frame, um, the Fremont bridge data. Okay, so we have, we have this function that, that will download this data for us. And um, if this all worked correctly, then what we should be able to do in here is delete this function and instead say from Jupyter workflow dot data import get Fremont data right there. So now let's let's try this. Let's restart and run all and see if this has worked. And so if this if this all has worked, then we should be we should be downloading the data here, um, doing that parsing, um, resampling and plotting, and then doing the various group buys. And yes, yeah, so so it all worked. We have this function now that we can import from any notebook in this manner and download our data and get it in the nice cleaned form that we're working with right here. And just so you can see, if we if we look at this get Fremont data function with a question mark. That's how you access documentation in Jupyter. Um, we can actually see what our parameters are, file name, URL, and what it returns. And you know you can even do things like uh, like press shift tab and get a list of what the parameters are. And you can do two question marks to get um, actually a look at the source code. So that's something that's nice about defining these functions is you, you automatically get this documentation in the Jupyter Notebook. So of course what we end with, um, if we go back here and do git status, 
um, we see that there's this Jupyter workflow. So I want to do git add Jupyter workflow slash star dot pi git status. And we're also going to um, oh I want to I want to save this notebook too in our new form git status uh, git add Jupyter workflow dot ipy and b. So we have these three files to add. Here's some um, temporary files. These come from Emacs. Um, since I use that for my text editor, editor those are kind of like Emacs backup files. So I'm going to go into my git ignore and um, actually say uh, Emacs, I don't want anything that ends with a tilde to end up in the git repository. So I go back here. That's clean. And um, I'm going to add my git ignore. So I have everything there that I that I just added. I'm going to git commit um, move data download to Jupyter workflow package um, and push origin master. And uh, once I enter my password, which I can do while talking, it's it's pretty tough. Um, then everything should work. And let's just let's just make sure we have this all on GitHub now. If I go to Jake VDP slash uh, Jupyter workflow. Um, everything should be here. Yeah, we have this Jupyter workflow package and we have the data and the init.py file. And everything's there on GitHub so that it's now backed up and we won't lose it if anything happens to our computer. And uh, we, can, we can recover it wherever it is. So that's the next thing. So, so the next thing that I want to do in this is talk about how you'd continue developing in this style, in this pattern, pushing in useful tools off to the Python package, and then um, coming back to the notebook and analyzing data. So thanks for listening.